This time we go digging into a couple of excavator models. The first is Diecast Masters 85674 and it's the Caterpillar 320GX hydraulic excavator. On top of that we have model 85675 which is the Caterpillar 323GX. First up we'll try the packaging for the 320 on the Cranes etc Weighbridge and it's about £2 4 ounces. Or if you prefer, 1 kilogram and 15 grams. Now in real life the 323 is a heavier machine than the 320. So let's check the box for the 323. And yes, it is slightly heavier. Both these models come in the usual high quality Diecast Masters packaging. And that starts with the robust outer shipping carton. Inside that we get to see the nylon bag. And although the bag is not a Louis Vuitton, it does protect the tin very well. The bag opens at one end and then we get to see our first sight of the tin. And these are a little bit different because of their colour scheme. The tins look even more impressive in black. And in fact the whole decoration of the tin makes it look something special. The style of the tin is the same as the usual tins, because on the back there's some technical details about the real machine. And it's good that this sort of thing is always provided along with the model. So the next thing to do is to open the tin just like you open a tin of biscuits. And first out is some paperwork in the shape of a Diecast Masters mini brochure. And there's also a single instruction sheet. And we'll take a look at that shortly. On we go to the top layer of foam and there's a couple of parts there. And it turns out that that's where the operator has been sleeping and there's also a pair of plastic tweezers. Next we get stuck in with a finger and thumb and pull out the top layer. And finally we get to see the model sitting in the bottom. Next we use the giant hand grab to carefully ease it out. And there's still some packaging to remove which is protection for the crawler tracks. And there's also an elastic band around the cab and that helps secure the roof. And we'll see why soon. Back to the paperwork and the mini brochure is actually dated 2020. So it's surprising it's not a later version. Next there's a single printed sheet and that tells you how to insert the operator. Armed with the instruction sheet we can proceed to put the operator in the cab. And the roof easily unclips and then we can see inside. Of course nobody really wants to physically touch an operator. And Diecast Masters have helpfully supplied giant tweezers so we don't get our hands dirty. Of course the operator might take offence at that and play hardball at sitting in the seat properly. But that's no problem because we can then use the tweezers as an offensive weapon. And start inflicting some pain on this awkward character. Of course there can only be one winner here, and it's not the operator. Let's weigh the 320 model and see what it comes up at, and it's 350 grams. As we said, the 323 is a heavier machine in real life, so let's see if that's replicated in the model. And yes, we see that the model 323 is also a little heavier. For the detail, we'll look at the 320 first, and it's got nicely detailed metal tracks. And it's good to see that there's some detailing underneath the body. The track frames don't have working rollers, but there's a nice looking sprocket, there are steps, and also tiny graphics. Moving on to the cab, there are lights, a grab rail, and a mirror. And at the back of the roof, there's also a small aerial. By applying the squeeze test, you can see that the grab rail is plastic. Behind the cab, there's a grill cast in the engine cover, and the other grill patterns are formed of graphics. And all of the graphics on the model are very sharp. Moving to the counterweight and it's nicely shaped. And on the other side of the model we have textured steps. And there's another large plastic grab rail. 
Looking down from above, there's some very good detail of the hydraulics leading to the boom. And the top of the body also has a variety of textured surfaces. And there's also a small exhaust pipe. Underneath the boom foot, there's hydraulics detailing. And the standard of detailing running up the boom is very good. And there are nice thin hydraulic hoses. There are sharp graphics on the boom. And the light detailing is very good with highlighted wiring. Moving to the stick and there are small graphics applied. And the riveted connections are painted. The bucket is a decent casting. As you would expect, the 323 has different graphics. But there are other differences too. And as you can see here, the crawler tracks are longer on the 323. There's also a difference in the bucket size. There's even a difference in the stick dimensions. And it's very good that Diecast Masters have not just used the same castings for both models. For the functionality, we'll test out the 323, and the metal tracks roll very easily, and they're nicely tensioned. If we test the tracks out on a rough surface, then they bite nicely, and they roll very well, and it doesn't require any downward pressure on the model. We can spin the machine around wildly, and hopefully that shows the operator that we're not mucking about. Let's get on to digging, and the first thing we can do is to stretch up the boom and stick high. And it reaches up reasonably well. The hydraulics on the review model are a mixture of stiff and very stiff, but that might change if you use them a lot. They will hold the model reaching straight out, and you can fold the boom and stick right up to make a transport load. Let's check the digging depth using the Cranes Etc. patented system, and it reaches down to a reasonable depth. But if we look in close up, there is still some piston showing on the main boom rams. Of course, a model like this is always great to display with others. Now, to be strictly accurate, the GX series was really targeted at the Chinese market. So we should really have Chinese trucks rather than US ones. But even so, they still go well together. And so you can make some interesting displays. Let's go for the max and put both the 320 and the 323 on the same truck. And don't say this is not realistic, because you can see it right here in front of your very eyes. Now we're not so keen on that overhanging boom at the back, but we can do something about that. Once again, Diecast Masters has done an excellent job of presenting these two models. And the models themselves are a nice balance of detail and functionality. If you want to add to your collection of Caterpillar models with ones that work across the globe, then these two in the GX series are very good. Mm -hmm. 